through 17 in one section. Um, but for you, you got to figure out, okay, what do I want to do? The great thing is, is once you figured it out, you put a little time into that, once you figure it out, you don't have to figure it out again for 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 weeks. A lot of us spend time every week, what am I going to preach this week? What am I going to preach this week? It's chosen for you. You know, after I've been preaching through Acts, I know what's coming up next. And when, so when I finish one sermon, I know what the next sermon is. It's right there. Now, you got to understand, though, the best way to do this is not necessarily just to do it chapter by chapter. Because the chapters, I mean, obviously they weren't a part of the original text. And sometimes they're, they, they, they cut the thoughts right in half. The best way to do it is to try to see where are the thoughts that are there. And so you want to try to break it down and look for some natural selections within the passage itself. Look for some natural breaking points. For example, in the, uh, in the narrative, it's going to be one story. What is the story here? And I want to, I want to preach on this story. But what is that story? Okay? Uh, in, uh, in the Gospels, one of the teachings of Jesus. You know, I want to take Matthew 25 and the sheep and the goat, say, goats, and I want to really preach on that. And so that, that would be a, the, the technical term is a pericope. That is a complete thought, a complete story there. And you want to break it down that way. So instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to preach on, um, you know, Luke 15. Well, there are three great stories in Luke 15. Pick one of them, you know, or pick the first two and then say the, the prodigal son for the next Sunday. You know, instead of, well, I, I, I chose Luke 15 and so I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what I, spend some time up front trying to break it down, trying to outline it. See where the natural outline falls for the passage of Scripture. And again, the great thing is, after you've spent that time, that might take you 30 minutes, it might take you an hour, but after you do that, you don't have to worry about it for 10 weeks, for 12 weeks, because you've got all your out, you've got all of what you're going to do for your preaching, now you've got three months ahead of you. And so it, it's helpful to do it in this way. Again, look at some of the natural selections. In the narrative, look for one story. In the gospel, one story, one teaching, or one parable. In the epistles, perhaps a paragraph, or a particular issue. Um, you know, the, most of our Bibles are divided up in topics within the scripture. Look at that and see if it works, see if it fits or not. Uh, paragraphs might be too small, might take you too long work through it. And so try to see if there are three or four that work together. And it was interesting if you read some of the, uh, if you read like the King James Bible or the American Standard, the paragraphs were much longer. They become shorter paragraphs recently because our reading uh, tendencies have changed. And so now the Bible translators are noticing that. So they're breaking down things into really short little sections now. And if you just pick a short little section, then it might take you a year to work through a book of the Bible. Don't, be, don't get stuck by that. Look yourself and see, where's the natural breaks here? Where are the thoughts here? Where does this work well? Maybe compare two or three different translations and see where they break it down. Um, but whenever I read through a book of the Bible and want to attack a study of the Bible, this is the very first thing I do. Is I just read through it and I outline it on my own. I outline it for myself. I try to get three or four different translations out uh, and see, okay, where are their dividers? Because they, they're going to pick out certain things here. Where are their dividers? Wow, these guys don't match up here. I wonder why not. Let me see why not. And let me go with what this guy is doing over here. And so take some time to do that. Uh, in the law, one law or a group of laws. Prophecy, one if-then consequence in the prophecies. Or maybe a particular prophetic utterance you go through. Psalms, one psalm, or break it, down, break it down into a stanza. Proverbs, a particular proverb or a group of proverbs that you're going to talk about something. And so yeah, this, is, this is how you go about choosing a text here. Is you sort of look at it uh, wow. section by John, section.
that a good idea for ministers to quote preach in a sermon? Um, yeah, he asked two different questions. Do I do it? No. Is it a good idea? Yes. <laughs> I know. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not something that I've had the practice of doing, but it's definitely a good idea. And there are different uh, preachers that have done that at different times. Um, uh, I mean, Carl Barth was one of them. I got an illustration of him, but he used to pull together people um, into a room together. And, you know, Carl Barth was an amazing thinker. But he wanted to know what the people in the pews were thinking. So he could sit down and even talk to them about uh, certain texts of scriptures. And um, it's so, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. I need to practice it more. Anyone else? Okay, what's the point of all this preaching anyway? It's to try to get people to heaven. Right? So I want to close before we uh, break for lunch. I want to close with this little clip. I said all day, but he loved that.